Welcome, here we are at the Windy City Chicago Pulp and Paper Convention 2024. A lot of great painted cover from the Pulp Fiction books, Golden Age comics, artwork, and a lot more.
Welcome back fellow time travelers and comic book aficionados. That was a run through through the Windy City Pulp and Paper Convention of 2024. And it was amazing. A lot of beautiful artwork, uh, books, especially painted covers featuring science fiction, detective stories, and true crime. And it was very interesting to note the evolution of the pulp fiction book to the comic book. Uh, particularly in the late 30s and transitioning into the 40s. Publishers like Fawcett, Ziff Davis, Dell, as well as Fiction House, all started with Pulp Fiction before the popular comic book stories came later. So it was really neat going from vendor to vendor, seeing what they had and the types of books that they presented. And for all those that participated, uh, they received a a uh, book right here, and this is issue number 23 because this is the 23rd Windy City Pulp and Paper Con of its kind in the year 2024. So it was really neat to be issued one of these uh, books that provides some history, some dialogue between some writers from the past, and also some short stories that are modern pulp fiction in this day and age. And you could see by the cover, and this was common at the convention, these more uh, dreary, dark covers that pretty much led to the banning of comics and the Comic uh, Authority Code in the uh, early 50s. It was covers like this that would seduce innocent kids, and it was something that parents would not have. And this Pulp Stories has a great uh, bunch of information. I was able to pick up a postcard, and these were lying around too, so I just wanted to show you some neat artwork there. You see that seductive, sultry uh, cinematography-like panels there and some of the history of uh, written. Horror books were in abundance as pulp fiction, true crime also, and science fiction, which is my personal favorite. But uh, the, the covers were pretty mesmerizing and were quick to uh, grab anybody's attention. Uh, to look at the books and a lot of them were from the 30s and 40s and some were more pricey than others. This uh, program also has a biography and memoriam for Roger Hill who's an avid comic book collector and champion of, of being a fan of EC Comics. In interviews with EC writer Bill Gaines, as well as illustrator and the great artist we know, Wally Wood and Johnny Craig, were conducted by Roger Hill. And this is remembering him in this book. And he was instrumental in creating uh, fanzines and artfully illustrated his own covers for Squad Trent, a uh, fanzine that featured a lot of these sci-fi alien elements and the works of Wally Wood. And if it wasn't for Roger Hill, we wouldn't have that pop culture following uh, with EC. A lot of fans enjoy EC, but he created an offshoot of his own artwork and interviews that no one dared to do with the staff at EC. He even commissioned in 1969 in August, Johnny Craig to do artwork for him and also presented his artwork and his fanzine and more. So he really brought EC comics out of their shell and into the public for a lot of people to enjoy. You can see his fanzine still sells on eBay for what copies exist of Squad Trent. So we have to thank Roger Hill for that. Windy City Pulp Stories was a fascinating read. It illustrated the history of how these magazines came to be, some of the background between the artists and also the writers in creating a number of pulp stories. It's absolutely fascinating. Even the back right here shows some artwork from Spicy Mysteries, which a lot of back issues were in abundance at this con, as well as uncanny tales and weird tales, and also amazing stories. It is known that the first appearance of Buck Rogers was in Pulp Fiction and it's considered one of the scarce and more valuable uh, books to collect. So from going from dealer to dealer, I was mesmerized by the artwork, the drama, the suspense unfolding, and the intrigue that they had to offer that I picked up four books of my own, including this issue here of Pulp Stories. 
You'll notice the artwork right there, a menacing villain, a damsel in distress, and the sun god, the man-made. But a particular note, a very famous writer that we know was with DC Comics, uh, Gardner Fox, is presented here and possibly his first appearance uh, in this pulp novella. So the artwork is uh, fun and exciting. There's some inside there, just a few panels, and also the table of contents. And the very familiar logo for Fiction House is right there as well. So before those Golden Age goodies, we had the uh, pulp magazine and all its pages right here uh, showing that. And the story is actually by Gardner Fox, who's the first one to be presented. Fox, interestingly enough, created a 86-page story in this very book. And at around the same time, he was also writing stories for comic books that artists would rendition and create, including 4,000 in total for comic books and 1,500 for DC Comics. Gardner Fox is best known for creating the Justice League, Sandman, The Flash, Hawkman, as well as stories for Mystery in Space and Strange Adventures, which were a part of the DC lineup. So seeing this name resonates with comics, and here he is in an appearance in Pulp Fiction. So it was great to see this book and to have a copy of seeing one of the greatest writers producing uh, work and text right here. Gardner Fox was always interested in being more of a writer to the likes of Ray Bradbury and other uh, science fiction greats and more, but he blessed the comic book realm as well as the pulp fiction realm with his great thoughts and work. And, and looking at the viewer, you can also enjoy some black and white ink illustrations of some of the logos of the stories and some scenes that were artistically rendered. And it's really neat to see that style and that line work, as you could see here. There's also a page with a monster and serpent. And toward the end, we have uh, more science fiction action, including glowing gems. And it's just great to see some of the few illustrations that are in these pulp books. A total of maybe five to seven illustrations are featured, and they're a treat to see. And in the summer of 1948, this beautiful cover was released. It also features a story by Gardner Fox inside, and by then he was gaining more traction as a pulp writer, as well as Ray Bradbury, right in the middle with Pillar of Fire, which is a story inside the book, of about a man who was buried for many centuries only to come awaken to an, a new society where people had no fear or were afraid of any threat. But a great interesting story, also known for his work in Martian Chronicles in Fahrenheit 451, we have Ray Bradbury in this Planet Stories Pulp Fiction book right there. Just enjoying the cover here, this is by Alan Anderson. And Alan Anderson was from Minnesota. He also served in the Navy and came back to do more illustrative artwork. He did a lot of artwork for Fawcett and Ziff Davis publications, much like the covers here. Also, Lars of Mars, which also has beautiful space covers with vixens and astronauts. And his work it really resonates with me as I enjoy the science fiction. And even here, you can see the glow and the details and just the fine work with the paint that is Alan Anderson. So great to pick this up in the collection. Looking at the viewer here, we can also see some of those great illustrations that we have in the table of contents. Some of the robots that you see and the technology that was kind of a foreshadowing of a future robotic society. And this was back in post-World War II, 1948. Just admiring the artwork, take a look for yourself, and just see how the ink works with the black and white. All right, fellow time travelers, let's backtrack to the year 1939, where the thought of space travel and luxury liners was already a thought. Here in Amazing Stories, 
This is the same title that brought Buck Rogers. And here we have liners, space liners, with Henry Gade creating the story and the pulp inside. But look at the artwork with the observatory, the people inside. Looks like they're having a great time. Another space liner here going by. So these stories are about wonder, about a fiction that could be a reality. And even 80 plus years later, we're still clamoring to the idea of creating something like that. How far have we come? Are we headed in the right direction? Those are all the questions I ask myself, but are already imaginatively written in these stories right here. The back even features an interesting future war tank. Look at all the turrets and guns. And unfortunately, this was the beginning of World War II, and the idea of armory and machines was already there uh, for this book that I have amazing stories. Inside, we also have some illustrated black and white pictures. Interesting to see and look at. I'll let you peruse those as more than 10 stories are in here. It's interesting to note that pulp magazines would try to outsell each other by saying that you can have 8 to 12 to sometimes 18 stories for the same price of 20 cents. So it's the number of stories and hopefully the quality is what sold a lot of these Pulp Fiction books before they started to lose popularity in the 40s and 50s when we start to see television, comic books, and other media take its place. And so they say never to judge a book by its cover. And unfortunately, I did just that. And here we have the amazing stories, The Galaxy Raiders by Robert Gibson Jones. A beautiful cover. I can't say no to robots and a lady leading the charge and she does so with such fierceness. I love her headdress you see on the top there and it reminds me of the Cinema Metropolis, a film that was set in black and white and also a silent film. And to me, it called out my name in my time traveling journey, this cover right there. And let's take a look at some of the black and white illustrations because I always enjoy that too. And the artwork speaks for itself. You can kind of see how the artist thought, the uh, angles that they looked at, much like a movie. So I hope you enjoy some of those illustrations too. Names like Gardner Fox and also Ray Bradbury are featured in a number of these pulp books. Did you know that Gardner Fox created the battering for Batman as well as his utility belt and quickly took over after the first few issues of Batman were created by Bill Finger? And it's interesting to note that Gardner Fox has done a lot behind the scenes of DC's collection. Hey, Time Traveler, what about comics? Enough about Pulp Fiction. Were there any comics at the con? And the answer is a resounding yes. The first uh, booth that I went to is a dealer, uh, Terry Comics, and his associate. They're a lot of fun to talk to, knowledgeable about their content and their inventory. I was able to pick up a Strange Adventures book, issue number 101, from 1959. And of course, I'm a sucker for these covers. You can see a giant lizard foot stepping down, crushing the earth, staggering the people around, including the lady facing right there. You could see her astonishment. And this definitely reminds me of Jack Kirby's art. There's a lot of that uh, personifies the shock and anguish and horror and whatnot. And just love this cover. And it's interesting to note, not to sound like a broken record, but Gardner F. Fox has a story in this very issue. After all, Mysteries in Space, Space Adventures was Gardner Fox's uh, big uh, contribution as well as for the action heroes, of course. And just opening up the splash page, you can see some of the artwork there, typically done by Carmen Infantino, and then later on Dick Giordano or some of the graves on those fiction books. And just uh, really neat to see, mystery on twin spaceships. So much like Pulp Fiction, we have three or four or five stories in a 32-page comic as we do itemize in the pulp book. So the format, the storytelling, and the attraction 
of pulp and comics are much in the same, and just happy to pick up this first book in the queue right here. And I have a question for the comic community. Uh, this book was actually part of a collection right here, and it reads for Jerome Wenker's collection. And there's a number of books that have this certificate. He's credited with having one of the largest collections. Let me know in the comments if you own a book from this collection from Mr. Jerome, or if you've heard about this or know about this, I'd be interested to know about it. Also from Terry's Comics, there's an ACG book right here, Forbidden Worlds, and I have a bunch of these and can never stay away from them as I always like the covers and the fantasy. And this one's by Adgan Whitney, also known for his artwork for Herbie. Uh, this is earlier than that, and this underwater adventure with flamethrowers and spears. You can't go wrong with that. This is a beat up copy for five bucks. I couldn't say no, but the artwork definitely says yes in this 1956 beauty right there. Look at all the detail, the hatching, the shading gives you the perspective and feel like you're right there. I uh, really need to see that. And just turning the pages, ACG has given us some great underwater mysteries especially the Atomic Submarine, which is one of uh, my favorite short-run series, actually. But just reading through this Forbidden World is a lot of fun. You always see some elements of mystery, magic, and suspense. Look at the lightning. Look at this lady here in panic right there. And kind of can't wait to read the story. I haven't read it yet. So Forbidden Worlds is never off limits for me and neither are spaceships they're never off limits to me here with this one the explorer 1959 goodness acg happy to add this co the collection from the pulp con any of you fellow time travelers a fan of popeye the lone ranger the phantom well right here we have a issue of king comics King Features Syndicate, from May of 1942, and it features a beloved Popeye and Wimpy right there. And it looks like the merry-go-round, the horse rather, gave him a kick in the pants. How about that? So this is a nice, thick compilation of several different stories in one. And this happens to be a binder copy, a copy with some uh, holes in it from here uh, to there on the bottom. And you can even see some glue that's uh, preserved from there. And a lot of the times, uh, collectors would take a few of these books and bind them into a textbook or a bound book. And this one is, happens to be rescued and separated from that compilation. Because of the damage, I was able to get it under $20. But it's great to have this book from 1942 featuring one of my favorite characters, Popeye. My mother would occasionally pick up a VHS tape from Woolworth, which is no longer in existence, unfortunately, and would play Popeye on the theater and the VHS TV. This was before looking at a tablet and watching her favorites. But here we have The Lone Ranger, a few stories in succession. Really need to see some of that artwork. We also have Thimble Theater, and that actually features Popeye. And this one goes on and on. Much like a newspaper, we have the different features inside here. So happy to add this to the collection. I have a number of Mandrake the Magician, Popeye, and Phantom books. And this happens to be one of them from King Comics. There's also the Clattenjammer Kids. They were also featured with King Syndicate. So nice preserve. Otherwise glossy and good shape. If it's not for the glue and the hole punches, uh, this would be a, in a pretty good condition, in a very good condition. But it's an interesting part of Americana history, as it was a bound copy. And I thought that was just neat and was a pleasant surprise for me. Flying high on comics, every airplane has two wings, and so do I. I have a two-wing comics back-to-back. I uh, just wanted to show you these here. I was able to pick them up from a different vendor. Not uh, Terry's Comics, although we did have some really nice Fiction House books. Uh, this happens to be the series featuring the airplanes and flying and just a fan of these. In fact, I do believe 
that this issue might be the very last one, issue 124 of the Wings series from Fiction House, and this one here is 108. Some of the ones that feature a bombshell or a lady tend to go for a lot more for obvious reasons because of the cover appeal, but I always enjoy the aviation, the flying, and some of the artwork that's shown from the skies. So happy to add these two to the collection. I can't help but show you some of the detail that goes into some of these books. In Fiction House, Ollie's did it best. Look at this page right here. The, you can see the radio pilots. They're intensely focused on their mission, the airplane. And this artwork is phenomenal, just to see. Flipping through the pages, you just look at the artwork first. And then you read the story because it just goes on and on. The shadows, the artillery, the looks of everything, the MiGs, the Zeros. So it also, from World War II to the Korean War, this is what the book covered. But after the Korean War, a lot of these comics fell out of favor because the war was kind of a tired theme among many collectors. I always enjoy it for the history of it and just how they depicted some of those scenes with the truly great machines of, that flew in the air. There's even some wild cargo, some safari story as well. So just great to have this in the collection. I'll be rereading it again and again and just enjoying this lucky piece that I found right here. Hey, time traveler, aren't you gonna show any Archie? You typically do. Well. Funny you should ask. I happened to find one from Terry's comic, and that happened to be Betty and Veronica, issue number 46, from October of 1959, with this swimsuit cover. It's spring as we're traveling here, going into summer, and can never get enough Archie, especially from Harry Lucy, who did these nice definitive covers. And a little bit of an innuendo, not by much, as sometimes Archie tends to have such covers, but was happy to pick this one up and add to the collection. It's a, a higher grade than I typically find, about a 5.0, and just shows some Archie goodness, a few stories in the mix, including one with uh, baseball, where Betty's actually disguised as one of the players. So baseball's in full swing right now, and here we have, just appropriately so, some baseball action with uh, Jughead, Betty, and Veronica, and also a misguided missile. We have a little bit of that action going on. 1950s was about rockets and space, if anything, from what we saw today, a lot of space uh, theme. But I was happy to add this one as well to the collection. So Archie Goodness, I couldn't leave you hanging, and here we are. And a mighty thank you to letting me take you on a tour of the Windy City Pulp and Paper Con of 2024. The artwork, the magazines, and the comics were a real treat. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a little bit of history from some of the great artists that we talked about. And story writers, especially Gardner Fox, and also the memory of Roger Hill, who was one of the biggest fans for EC Comics and more. So thank you for watching. Happy time traveling. Happy comics and be well.